Perseverance. The continued effort of moving forward despite difficulties or failures or other obstacles. That's perseverance. And this week on The Rutledge Perspective, I want to really dig into what it means to persevere. Whether that's with all of the societal things that are going on, whether that's in your career as you're continuing to be absolutely amazingly successful and move into those places and those organizations and those positions that you want, or you've made a transition into entrepreneurship and that's what you want to do. And you're trying to make sure your business is still viable through this, this third year of the pandemic, all of that, that ability to persevere is really important as we're moving into 2022. And it's a word that is very much represented by black and brown and indigenous and other underrepresented people in this country. And it is particularly poignant right now as we're entering Black History Month in 2022 to really think about and talk about not only the resilience of people, but the perseverance of people, people who come to mind that despite all of the things that said no, still did it. You know, there's a a meme I keep seeing that says, imagine a system that every time you try tells you no and you making it anyway. That's perseverance. Well, this perseverance shows up in a number of ways. And quite frankly, I feel like I have persevered this last couple of weeks because with the technical issues and all of that kind of drama that's just been happening, it's keeping that eye on the ultimate goal, which is being in service to you that has kept me moving. Including today, when I had an opportunity to interview an amazing guest, and you will still get to hear her interview, it just probably won't be this week because this is what you're gonna hear this week. And when we started, God wink, something said, Laurel, just give her a heads up about electricity and connectivity because you live in Houston and Texas has this grid that's unreliable and we've got a little bit of rain coming down, so you never know. So just, you know, last week we had power surges, so just just in case. So I told her just in case. We got into the interview. It was actually going really well. We had a little bit of a stutter in the beginning. She's actually in Antigua. Had a little bit of a stutter in the beginning and got into this really great conversation. And all of a sudden, everything on my end just went black, just completely dark, gone. (sighs) So after I said, are you kidding me? Insert really ugly word (laughs) between you and kidding. I restarted, made sure everything was up and running, emailed her, said, hey, if you want to get back on. And then the lights kept flickering. And I said, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to continue this because this is just a really great example of taking lemons and making lemonade. So we're going to do it again. We're going to do part two and we'll just put it all together. I've got a great editor and we'll just make it work. And she was fantastic. So you're going to love the interview. So I got through that. And then when it went off for the third time and stayed off and I ended up calling the provider, which is always traumatic, I had a decision to make. I could either just burst into tears and go to bed, which is what half of me felt like doing, or I could just run around my house and start breaking stuff because that rage was the other part of myself. That's what I felt like doing. Neither one of those would have been very productive, given all of the things that I need to do. And so I got up, I got some peanut butter and crackers because didn't want to open a refrigerator, no power. Can't cook anything, no power. But I needed to put something in my stomach. So peanut butter and crackers, I just took a minute. I just breathed and I said, Laurel, you still have your eyes on what you are doing your purpose, why you are here, why you've gone through all of this stuff in order to be able to connect and to be able to make an impact. Is either one of those two options moving you along the path? No, they are not. 
They may feel good in the moment, but they are not productive towards moving you to the path. So you are going to make it through this. You are going to buck up. You're going to persevere through this continued electrical grid craziness in Texas. And you're going to make some things happen today. You're just going to figure it out. And I ended up doing some lives using my iPad and all of those kind of things. But I had to make a choice in that moment whether I was going to be defeated or whether I was going to persevere. The same thing happens when you are a leader and you are in an organization that is undergoing maybe significant change or you're dealing with a big project. Any of those circumstances lead to interesting behaviors. And depending on your organization and whether or not it is truly moving integrity, living what it says it wants, living its core values, you can be faced with a number of things that require you to really decide how you're going to show up, how much effort you're going to put in. Are you going to keep pushing and just make it through this hump? Or are you going to take a knee on this one and sit on the sidelines? Can you persevere through the difficult times? And now more than ever, people need to know how leaders can work through crisis. We are still in crisis, third year of a pandemic. It is still that leading through crisis mode, that understanding that you've got to be clear. You want to connect with your people. You've got to understand the difference between being consistent versus treating everybody the same, because it's just about consistency right now. You've got to be really honest and operating in integrity and being transparent with folks. You can no longer say it is not possible to get work done remote. That's a lie. But you can say for us, we want people to come back in the office. And then with that choice, you've got to be ready to manage the consequences of that. But you can sit in and persevere through this madness that's going on. But it takes an ability to really be still, be really focused on the what. What is the ultimate goal? Where are you trying to go? What is it that you're trying to accomplish so that you can evaluate then the actions that you're taking to determine if they are getting you towards that thing, if they're taking you away from that thing. And if they're taking you away from that thing, is it just simply a detour or are you completely derailing and you're never going to get there? It's going to completely sideline you. That perseverance enables you to pause a minute to rest and regroup and rejuvenate and really take the time to decide, you know what, this is going to be tough for a while, but I got to make it through. And I have to understand that there are people counting on me. There's a team that's relying on me. There's an organization that is relying on my resilience, my perseverance to be able to make it through because if they see it in me, then they can see it in themselves, right? Representation matters. And being able to represent that strength of leadership, that calm, or even if you're not calm, if you're really irritated and really frustrated, your ability to manage through those emotions and have people understand how you do that also is a way you train. Because remember, people will hear what you say, but they will believe what you do. They'll remember how you treat them. They'll remember how you responded. And so if you're in an organization that is really challenging you from a value perspective, from a culture perspective, from an innovation or action, whatever it is, how are you moving through that? How are you persevering through this really tough time? Because coming out on the other end of that, you're going to be wiser. You're going to be stronger. You will have learned some things that you may never have learned through a difficult time. When I was in an organization where we carved out, had a big carve out, they were spinning off my part of the business. And I would tell people all the time that were on my team, this is an incredible opportunity. Very rarely do you get the opportunity to really be in a spinoff. It's more likely that people are kind of in divestitures, but to really be spun off, true divestitures, but to really be spun off, to be able to be a solo company, right? To stand on your own as opposed to being absorbed by someone else. That is a really great opportunity to learn some things, if nothing else, to put it on your resume, right? And being able to persevere through that transition is huge to be able to say what you've learned, what you've gained, how you impacted 
the success of that particular transition. That's a huge thing, but it takes perseverance to get through that. It takes perseverance to get through that. It's also important when you think about perseverance to remain clear on that outcome so that you can also really understand when there are enough things happening that indicate to you the ultimate outcome is not possible nor probable so you can determine which action to take. It could be that an organization has decided to move in a way that just no longer works for you or that the values, the core values no longer align with yours or the actions that are supported and taken, the positions that are taken just are not positions you can support. So you, you're persevering in order to make sure that you are showing up 100%. You are still acting in integrity. But perseverance doesn't mean that you have to stay and hurt you or operate out of integrity. Sometimes perseverance means a recognition that it is time to make a change. And your perseverance switches from continuing to go to managing a transition. But it's still perseverance because you still have to find a way to dig deep to get into that energy and that focus and that drive to be able to get you where you want to be and to be able to recognize when you need to rest and rejuvenate and regroup because it's only in those silent times when you can make a very clear evaluation of what you're seeing and differentiate between what you're actually seeing, the facts of what you're seeing versus what you're feeling, which may or may not be true or based on fact. And then make a definitive decision around what action you want to take. Perseverance does not mean you fail to change. You fail to, to switch courses. That's not what it means. What it means is you continue your effort to move forward despite obstacles, difficulties, or failures. That failure could turn you to a completely different path. But your perseverance is that you got up and started moving again. And there is beauty in that overcoming. There's beauty on the other side of that perseverance, that peak of that mountain. Now, if you're looking at a transition, you're looking to either change careers, change jobs, change companies, or move into entrepreneurship from corporate or otherwise, right? There are people who move from entrepreneurship into a corporate space. Any of those transitions, that also takes a level of perseverance. How am I going to change the way I operate? If I'm moving from corporate to entrepreneurship, I'm now relying on me. I eat what I kill. If I'm not a salesperson, what does that mean? Am I ready? When it gets really tough and I don't understand and I'm trying to get clients or I'm trying to get business or get a loan or hire people or not hire people or fire people, when I'm trying to do all of these things, be my own tech support, how do I push through that and persevere through the tough times because again, I know what it is I'm trying to accomplish. The how is none of my business. The how, I'll figure it out along the way. But if the what is clear, then the how becomes flexible and adaptable. And I can persevere through those deep valleys, through those challenges because I've got my eyes on the prize. I've got my eyes on the ultimate outcome of where I'm trying to be. And that's what, when I think about, especially Black History Month and the people that have done amazing things, you know, Dr. Charles Drew, who was with blood plasma and started one of the first hospitals and um, Dr. Hale, the first heart transplant, Harriet Tubman, right? Emmett Till's mom. These amazing people who persevered, John Lewis, who really persevered through really difficult, difficult times and decided that the thing they were going after, equality, equity, voting rights, whatever it was, was worth it. And they persevered through the difficulties, the obstacles, the failures in order to get to the thing which is what makes it so sad that we're still fighting some of these battles decades later after people literally lost their lives to some of these battles. So it is important for us to persevere. 
in the pursuit of that thing that we want. And hopefully that there are enough people in your organizations who really do understand where you're trying to go and the purpose and the impact you're making uh, with integrity to really do really good work because not everybody's doing good work. That there are enough people societally who are really trying to do the right thing around equity and inclusion and fairness and honesty and integrity and truth and facts. There are enough of those people um, who are persevering through these times, which are extremely scary, where we're on the precipice of really, of real madness, quite frankly, that if you think about too hard, it can really paralyze you. Perseverance is pushing through the paralysis, right? It's not in getting into analysis paralysis. It's not allowing yourself to succumb to, well, I'm just one person. I can't change anything in this organization. I can't really make a difference on my team because I'm just one person. It only takes one person. And the reward of that perseverance is the beauty that's on the other side of overcoming. And if you can stand strong in where you're trying to go and see those challenges, those difficulties, those failures as learning, as additional information that you're gathering in order to make a different decision to still move towards the goal, then you have put everything in perspective to get yourself to the place you wanna be. I encourage you to think about perseverance in a different way, not as a negative, not as a, it's gotta be hard and I've gotta be on the ground just flailing in pain. Sometimes perseverance is just making up your mind that you know what, it's not easy. It may not be difficult, but it's not easy, but it's worth it. And if it's worth it, you can make it through it. Take this week to think about what you're persevering, how you can really beef up and shore up your energy, right? Your, your muscles for making it happen while giving yourself some grace and understanding that sometimes you need to rest and rejuvenate and be still so you can really see where you're going and be really clear on the next steps. I wish you exceptional perseverance. I wish you continued electricity. And yes, I know these are first world problems, right? There are things that are much bigger around the world, but I wish you continued connectivity in your efforts this week. Thank you as always for tuning in. I really appreciate every download, every listen, every follow. They really make a difference for me. Um, and I really want to be able to continue to bring messages that uplift and give you hope because you got this. I know you got this. Thank you for being a part of my village and we'll catch you next time. You've been watching The Rutledge Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. If we have given you a different perspective or if you've learned something new that you hadn't thought about before, please subscribe to The Rutledge Perspective podcast where you get your favorite podcasts and give us a like on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher. We really appreciate it. And your feedback is important as well as we use that to inform our next episodes. You can also head over to my website, laurelrutledge.com and download a freebie called Where's My Mojo that can really help you get out of your rut or maybe talk you back off that ledge of frustration. You can also find previous episodes of The Rutledge Perspective on laurelrutledge.com. I really appreciate your tuning in. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.